So to start off, I am going to do a little bit of an exercise with everybody here. So we're going to have another poll. Um, and when I when I first gave this, uh, let's see if I can stop sharing this one and launch my next poll. Okay, great. So you're going to graph yourself, so to speak. It won't, won't show up physically on the graph, but you're going to think about where on this graph you would land um, and, and fill out the poll based off that. The next step in my little scenario here in this activity um, is that I am now making you all low-income households. Um, and this is, this is a pretty realistic scenario, right? In California, especially 25% um, of households are energy insecure. There can be months where they're not sure if they can keep the lights on and keep the gas on. Um, and there's months where making rent comes down to a matter of less than uh, $50. Um, and, and I know from experience that this is a realistic scenario because I grew up in a low-income household in California. Um, and I, I thought my childhood was totally awesome and wasn't really you know, aware of the economics, but um, my mom who raised me and my two sisters as a single mom, she told me as an adult that there were months where she cleared the rent check and there was one cent left in her bank account. That's how closely she managed every single dollar. Um, and so Put, putting us in that mindset and that perspective, you can understand why it's so critical um, that as electrification moves forward and we try to make it equitable by recruiting lower income customers, we are very cognizant of what the bill impacts can be. Because even if you have an amazing direct install program that pays all upfront costs, for example, um, you can really still end up hurting people very badly if you start messing with margins that are that are this low. So, so in our scenario, you're now all low-income households um, and we have given you all heat pumps. We've replaced any cooling or heating that you had in your house with a clean, super efficient heat pump that performs perfectly to its listed coefficient of performance on the, on the faceplate. Um, and we are gonna figure out who makes rent over the winter. And I mean a little bit you know, flippant using some humor here, but um, but but really having come from this background um, and working in this field, it's it's extremely important to me that we take this that we that we apply this um, and we believe this and we understand how this all works. So I'll be using humor as a tool here with the intention of getting this to stick so we can make it work for folks. Okay, so let's go through the different scenarios. Um, if you are in my super cooler group, which looks like it was about 28% of you, you can raise your hand using the raise hand function. Um, you, you come out way ahead. This is awesome for you. Um, great. I see some hands raised there. Yeah. So, you know, you are a low income household who was probably stuck with some really, you know, crappy, inefficient air conditioner. Um, maybe you live somewhere just really, um, really hot in the summer you just have to run the AC to stay remotely comfortable and healthy and safe. Um, but maybe it's, maybe it's more mild in the winter. So you're not using a lot of gas heating. Um, and so that super efficient heat pump by default gave you a much more efficient air conditioner. You saved a lot of money um, on, on air conditioning over the summer. And you had a little bit higher heating costs in the winter, um, but nowhere near as much as you had saved in the summer. Um, and you really weren't spending that much on heating in the winter anyway. So it pretty much doesn't affect you too badly in the winter and you really come out ahead <clears throat> and tell your friends, you know, this is great. Um, and then we're gonna go to my um, high cooling, high heating, the both high group, which looks like it was about 16% of us. You can go ahead and um, raise, your, uh, raise your hand in the raise hand function. And um, so, the, you know, you still got those savings um, in the summer because you were really just spending a lot of money on AC. You might live somewhere where it's hot and, and humid maybe in the summer. You have to run it all the time. Um, but maybe it's also cold in the winter. So you're, you're also having to heat a lot to stay safe and comfortable in the winter. 
Um, and so, you know, you saved a lot in the summer, you're super happy about it. Um, but it, it kind of pushed your, your winter monthly margins, um, a little bit over and that made a couple of winter months tough. Maybe you had to put, uh, money on a credit card, which is a high interest rate. That kind of sucks because you know, you're low income. You don't have a lot of access to cheap capital. You don't have a, a HELOC at 4% laying around, um, and, and so you kind of, you come out, but you come out ahead overall throughout the year and it's, it's overall a good thing for you. And you're, you know, you're happy that you can use a healthier form of heating in your home for your, for your kids. Um, and then we're going to go to the, the low cooling, low heating, um, group. Not a lot changed for you. You don't really care. Um, cause you weren't really using your heater that much in the winter and you weren't really using your AC that much. You probably live somewhere very, very mild with maybe a very well insulated house and just, just not that big of a deal for you. But this isn't a great program outcome, right? Because um, the program still spent a lot of money, time and effort um, getting you engaged, uh, getting you to respond. Maybe you even had to take unpaid time off of work so you don't have a great leave policy, which a lot of low-income people are facing that kind of situation um, for, for the install. And so even if the install costs were covered, this had a cost to you is kind of annoying. And you tell your friends like, mm, I don't know, this whole heat pump thing is kind of maybe a waste of time. And that, that's not a great outcome uh, for the program. And, um, and then we have folks in our low cooling, high heating, our super heater group. Um, and in this particular audience, we only had uh, one person who fell into this category, but um, while they have great greenhouse gas, savings because they reduced a whole bunch of natural gas usage in terms of bill impacts and for a low income family this is the worst case scenario um, because you had much much higher heating costs all winter all that heating that you have to do is now switched over to your electricity bill and does you don't care that it's using fewer joules of energy you're paying more money uh, that you didn't have. And you don't get to catch up in the summer because you weren't really using your AC anyway. Um, but maybe you just live somewhere with really cold winters and you have to run a lot of heat so your family doesn't freeze. Um, and this really sucks. And this is what can lead us to having very bad outcomes, um, getting covered in the daily news. Uh, cause you know, I, I, my, my previous background before analytics was in marketing and a common saying was a happy customer will tell five of their friends. Um, but an unhappy customer will tell 500 of their friends and get on the local news, um, and say how much your product or your program hurt them. And we really cannot afford that in electrification. These families can't afford it. Um, it's unethical for us to let this happen if we have the meter data to look at um, to find out which of these groups folks are in and find those super coolers, everything we can to engage and help them um, and avoid actively reaching out to people who will actually be hurt by this intervention under current rate realities. <laughs>